Okay, so we're going to pick up where we left off last week doing our last day's series. This particular um, installment is called In Time Prep. So we're going to try to help you. I'm going to try to help you prepare for the end times. Uh, pre actually, pre not prepare for the end times, but just be prepared now because we are in the end times. So um, uh, this link is adamantbeliever.com forward slash last days two dot PDF. And we're going to go straight to the scriptures on this so that we can just jump right into it. Matthew 24, this is the Olivet Discourse that Jesus was speaking to um, his disciples when they asked him, uh, when will these things be? When he spoke of uh, the rocks being torn down and the beautiful temples being torn down, they asked, when will these things be? Then they said, what will be the sign of your coming? So they kind of wanted to know how things would end. And this is what he said in verse 7 of that discourse. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. So we understand we already have nation rising against nation. Kingdom against kingdom is, you know, we've got racial groups rising against each other. We have uh, just all kinds of conflict going on, even in families now. We're seeing a lot of people that are offended by their own parents that are warring against their parents and different things. So, I mean, all of these things have come to pass, and then especially the famines all over the world, uh, and then pestilences is what we're experiencing even now with the coronavirus and uh, the, uh, the COVID-19, whatever, they, whatever they're calling it this week. But that, that virus, what we're going through now, we're experiencing just, I mean, just the tip of the iceberg. It could be a lot worse. And I tell people all the time, don't complain, rejoice, because it could be a lot worse. And uh, then also the earthquakes. I talked about that last week, 15 earthquakes in one day that uh, in, a, in the United States. We, we're just seeing all kinds of, you know, different um, um, earthquakes. I think Puerto Rico just had a big one not too long ago. And so we're just seeing them all over the place. And, and the Bible says they would be in diverse places, meaning places that don't even uh, normally experience them are experiencing them. So the Bible says all of these are the beginning of sorrows or birth pains, like, just like a, a woman in labor. You know the baby's coming at a certain time because the pains increase. They start out more spaced out, and then those con contractions begin to close in on each other. And uh, the closer they get to each other, we know that that's the... Uh, we're closer to the actual birth, and that's kind of how it is now. All these things used to be kind of spread out. Every few years, you'd see something, you'd see this, you'd see that. Now, just back to back, we're just seeing all kinds of things happen. So we know that the time is short, and we know that we are in the end times, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is, in order to uh, prep for the end times, we're going to prepare our home. So prepare your home. That's first. We're going to prepare our homes. The church building, which is what this is, is a place of worship and house of prayer. But because many of us do not own our own buildings or land that we're on, we may choose to comply with county, cities, and states that we reside in, uh, compliance to this covid uh, a dilemma and, you know, just empty our buildings out and just allow, you know, our space to be empty and we go online and stream or whatever method the church has, uh, drive through church, outdoor church, whatever they're doing, uh, because a lot of churches just don't own their land. And uh, that's kind of the, the, the situation we're in. We're leasing in a lease space. And so, you know, with 500 people in a lease space, you pretty much, you know, have to play by the rules or you're going to have 500 people in your house. <laughs> so we kind of got to play by the rules a little bit here and, you know, think of the short term for the long term kind of thing. And, you know, I know a lot of people say, well, you got to fight and you fight. But some, you know, every every battle isn't your battle. OK. And um, as I get into this message, I'm going to kind of show you how, you know, the, the, some of these things may not be so bad. It may not be all that bad for people to not have access to their buildings for a short period. And here's, uh, and I'm going to get into that. 
as the end time perils unfold, we must be more reliant upon what we've learned and received in our time of collective gatherings so that we can apply these principles and examples to our own home. So it's pretty much now it's time for you to just, you know, what you learned in the gathering, it's time to gather your family together and teach those things or show those things. And a lot of times when you're caught up in church, you're caught up in titles, you're caught up in positions, you're caught up in working. A lot of times you need a break from that anyway. And a lot of times you can be someone different in church than you are at home. And so now it's time to see who you really are. Spend some time in home, confined to your home with your husband or your wife and your children for a long enough period. You're going to find out exactly who you are. <laughs> You're going to find out all the stuff that your job hid and sports hid and the church hid, all of those things. You're going to notice things about each other that you didn't even know existed all this time we've been together. And so... These are things I believe that are good for us uh, out of this situation. The situation is not ideal. It's less than ideal, but some of these things may be good for us. Being semi-confined to our homes is not the worst thing in the world. Amen? We, will still, we, we still have freedoms and liberties during this time. We must remain grateful. And when I say we still have freedoms and liberties, y'all know bombs went off this morning. You didn't wake up to the sound of tanks driving down the street and people shooting and, and looting and hiding and, and, you know, in your house and you got to answer the door holding a rifle. Like, you know, I, I mean, all of these things, we're not waking up to that. So we got to be careful how we complain during this time and really thank God for what we have. Most of us are confined to a home with a flat screen TV and an Apple TV and, a, a, a you know, a, a cell phones, smartphones, and I mean, you can talk to anybody anytime, FaceTime and all day, and you know, we, 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 that's not confinement. So, you know, <laughs> you need to be grateful for what we have because God has blessed us tremendously. So we still have freedoms and liberties during this time. Oh, they're infringing upon my liberties. You can go to the store, get what you want, and come back home. Nobody's infringing on you. It could be a lot worse. So we got to make sure there's balance there. Yeah, yeah, they kind of skirting the edge on the Constitution and some different things. We understand that. But at the same time, we're still a very blessed people. Uh, we're blessed people. Uh, your key opened your door before you grabbed the handle to go to the store. And then you went back home. I mean, come on, y'all. We must remain grateful for what we are able to do and have during this time. Being in close quarters with our family for a season is actually not a bad idea. Churches should do this anyway. I know we do it at our church. We do it once a year. We just shut the church down and go out and do something different. We go to the park or we go just do something. But it's not a bad idea because a lot of times folks hiding in church. They want to see their friends and they want to see other people other than the people that they're supposed to be seeing every day. So they hide in church. So being in close quarters forcibly. The kids can't, you can't hide them in school. School can't babysit them. Now you see what you have and what you gave birth to. And you're going to believe them teachers next time they call. But uh, <laughs> being in close quarters with our family for a season is actually not a bad idea. It's time to see if what our church gatherings taught us really can be applied to our homes. Now this is the sad part. Children hospitals are filled right now because parents do not even know how to properly discipline them. So just children are being abused left and right. And I've had a, had a doctor actually tell me that. In the children's hospital, a lot of kids are showing up with bruises and beaten by their parents because they're not even used to have, having them around like that. They're used to school taking them. They're used to sending them off somewhere else. But now that they have to be in the house over a period of time, a lot of times the pressure is just building in that home because they're just not used to that. So that's something that we definitely need to be praying for. Divorce rates are up. Folks have just separated. I'd rather have Corona than be with you. I'm going to call Corona. What's her number? <laughs> but they'd rather have the virus than be in the house with their wives or their husbands. So divorce rates are up because couples never spent this t kind of time together. Depression and anxiety are up because so many regret fail relationships and are 
lonely. And this is why I've always stressed this. I've been stressing this for years. So anybody that's been listening to EX Ministries at Adam and Believes Our Church, you know I've been stressing. Go make that right. Go fix that relationship. Go mend that relationship. Go say I'm sorry. Go get forgiveness. Now you're in the house by yourself. You're in an apartment by yourself. Can't go nowhere. You should have fixed that relationship. And, and I've, been, I've been saying it. I've been saying it. I'm going to keep saying it. Many are not prepared um, <clears throat> for this time and wish they had heeded the warning to forgive, make amends, and invest in their families before now. You trying to find somebody. Prostitutes ain't even on duty during the, the COVID. The family, <laughs> the family is the foundation of God's platform. So God built everything on the family. He made the family first. So y'all need to go, <laughs> y'all need to go and make sure y'all get these situations right because this is important to God. This is the foundation that God created. Amen. Isaiah 26 and 20. He says, come my people enter. And this blessed me. You know, when I, uh, the, the, you know, I, I talked to the city and we were trying to work out a way to have church. And I was like, man, I just don't want to close this church, whatever. But then I had to think in terms of business, how many people we had, all these different things. And then the Lord began to just lay it on my heart. It ain't going to hurt you to miss. It's not, this, is, this is not permanent. And, and people are well prepared at ABC for this. And most of them came down here listening, surviving off the true church perspective and watching it. And anyway, so they, they can go back into survival mode very easily. But this particular uh, scripture actually just brought so much comfort to me. Isaiah 26 and 20 says, Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as if were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. Hide thyself in thy chamber. Go in your house. Shut the doors behind you for a little moment. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. So this scripture brought peace to me. It's that everyone has to have a time where they go into their house, shut the door behind them just for a little while. Get used to things there while the indignation be over past. Then we have to prepare in our preparation or our end-time prep, we have to prepare our hearts. So it's time to prepare your hearts. How do we do that? Well, let's find out. It's hard to believe that people can hold grudges and carry malice for years and years without ever getting over it. And, you know, I understand. I, I counsel a lot of people that are doing that. But, man, I mean, after so many years, some stuff you ought to just forget about. You know, but man, people will carry it. It will change their lives. They'll lose their hair. They'll get sick. They'll catch, a, 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 you know, a, a disease or something, a cancer, or they'll have something come on their bodies, diabetes. All, a lot of these uh, sicknesses and major illnesses are due to the fact that you were carrying things and wouldn't let it go and had your body all bound up and your immune system constantly fighting and your immune system just waxed tired and allowed a lot of things to happen in your body, and it, that's because you've been holding grudges too long, and people can hold grudges and carry malice for years and years, and when I started pastoring, this was something that God just laid on my heart. God showed me a lot of people are going to come to your church that are upset and have been using you as a batter ram, and the Lord spoke that to me. They've been using you as a gun to shoot at folks, and they've been using you to go after people and different things because of the nature of the ministry that, you know, uh, that I had. So God began to show me, you got to make these people reconcile. These people have to get that right, or they're going to turn on you. And uh, so, you know, in my efforts to try to do that, a lot of people get offended. They get offended when you go try to make them make amends, when you go try to get them to go and fix this situation or that situation. And they, and just like the Lord showed me, now they, they come after you. They're coming after you with everything. They hate you because you, you know, you, you tried to send them back to fix the situation that they weren't over. And that's what we got to be careful about in this last day, man. I'm just not letting something somebody did or something I think they did keep me from seeing Jesus when he shows up. It's just not worth it to me. Not worth it. I'm not going to stand before the Lord and say, did you see what he did? You're not going to be there. 
So I ain't trying to, no, man, I'm going to get stuff right. There is no one worth that to me. No one worth me missing heaven because I'm mad because they wouldn't let me in the recording studio. My album, they told me I wasn't good. I sure did. There is no way we will see Jesus when he returns with our hearts in an unforgivable state. How are you going to see Jesus and you haven't forgiven anyone? You haven't forgiven the people that you say hurt you. You haven't let things go. How are you going to see Jesus if you hadn't let things go? The word is explicit on this issue. If you do not forgive and let it go, guess what? God will not forgive you and let your sins go. People that can rehearse former trespasses over and over again are usually guilty of what they are holding on to. So when somebody's constantly telling you what this person did, and yeah, he did that, yeah, he did that, then it's them. They're holding, they're guilty of what they're accusing someone else of. That's why they continue to do it. They wish they had done something different or else they would be able to let it go. You remember when you used to, Remember when somebody would make you mad or something? I used to do this in high school. When somebody would make me mad, I would rehearse in my mind how I was going to deal with that situation when I get to that person. And I'm going to say this, and then I'm going to say that, and then I'm going to say this. And then you get to that person, and you don't say it. Then you go home, oh, man, and then you just all day, you just thinking, oh, I should have done this. Oh, this is what I should have done. I should have said it. Oh, I should have told him, see. Ooh, see, see, I should have told him. And then when you see him the next day, you're just looking at him. They done moved on. They eating their little uh, zebra cake in the cafeteria. Just, I mean, they happy talking to people. You just, you mad at yourself. You think you mad at them, but you're not mad at them. You mad at yourself because you didn't say what you wanted to say. I know I'm preaching. And that's what it is. That's the issue. You wish you had done something different or else you'd be able to let it go. They eat their zebra cake. They got cake just falling off their face, just like almost like they're looking at you. But they ain't thinking about you. They let it go. You somewhere about to have a heart attack and diabetic. Your A1C rose that night. When you can't let something go, you are not settled with how you handled it. And it's gone so far that your pride will not let you make amends. Ooh, that was good. The Bible calls these types of people scorners. They're scorned. Scorned people. And in the end times, this population of people will grow larger and larger because fatherlessness has grown. People are making worse decisions than they've ever made in their lives. They're having ba a lot of babies out of wedlock. They're just sleeping with this guy thinking he's going to stay with them, sleep with this guy thinking he's going to stay with them. Now they just do it for fun. This guy, all these mistakes, these guys just sleep with a bunch of women. They're just doing all these kind of stuff, multiple abortions, just all these things, and they think they're just going to get up from it and be okay. These things, gonna, these things are going to play a part of their lives psychologically so that they'll continue to repeat those bad decisions until they grab a hold of it and make it right. So in the end times, this population is going to grow larger and larger. People will feel justified in their malice and revenge because their hearts have turned cold to God's word, according to the Bible. When you can pick up the word of God and clearly see your actions are a violation, yet you still claim to be saved, then your love has waxed cold and you are reprobate concerning the faith. And that is that population is growing. A bunch of reprobate people in the name of the Lord, they are performing these actions. The scripture tells us in Matthew 6 and 14, for if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will do what? Also forgive you. But if you forgive men not their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. So, Next thing we have to do is prepare our minds. Folk crazy in the end times. Jesus didn't say it like that, but he may want to. He may have wanted to. Folk going to be crazy, y'all. Because people are crazy in the end times. There's just so many different things making people crazy. The diet. I mean, if after you ate a, a, a bag of flaming hot Funyuns and drunk a Tahitian treat, you don't need to be making any serious decisions. 
functioning off no sleep. Can't sleep at night because you done done so much wrong during the day. Yeah, folk crazy. And, and you making decisions based on that. So people today, their minds, I mean, after all they've been through, you know, folk don't get counseling anymore. You know, oh, I can handle that. No, you can't. You crazy. Amen. The new world order has conditioned us to be self-centered. We think about what we want and who we desire to be all day long. What we want and who we desire to be all day long. One of the downsides of being confined to our homes is how we get engulfed in social media and distance ourselves from our true self-image. That's why a lot of people like social media because they can be, you know, on social media, you could just put the highlight reel on there. Yeah, it's not the real life thing. You know, it's like somebody who, you know, they, they got a few little basketball moves. So they're trying to get into a school, so they put together their little DVD, and they're going to put all the good moves that they made on that. But you can't go by that, so they're going to have a combine. We're going to bring you all out here and play a whole game. I don't need to see the highlight reel. I need to see the real you throughout four quarters, what you're really going to do. And that's all social media is. It's the highlight reel. It's the parts they want you to see. Many today live double lives because of this. They are socially awkward in person, but a pseudo-confident person on social media. And I know this to be true because I met a dude. He's a preacher on social media. And man, on social media, he just be, oh, yeah, and these folk, they grow, blah, blah, blah. And then I met him. How you doing? I was like, you all right, man? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm all right. You sure, do? You good? Yeah, 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 yeah. But online, yeah, and see, and they, I was like, Did you see what is, what's that movie, Split? <laughs> they are socially awkward in person, but a pseudo-confident person on social media. Who is this dude? I was disappointed. I was like, bruh. They are a failure to themselves, so they struggle to express themselves to others in person. So because they feel failure or have feelings of failure within themselves because they didn't achieve or whatever they didn't become, whatever, that, when they're in person, they're, you know, their demeanor is shy because they have to deal with the energy of another person. They must type who they are and post the false image of who they desire to be. So online, it's just a giant. But when you meet them, they're just a nothing. We can't be double-minded and nourish an imaginary self-image that only resides in cyberspace. The devil created this whole social media thing so that men would not be sensitive to the hearts of others. You're not sensitive to the hearts of others if you're not in their space. If, you, if you're not around enough humans, Humans become expendable to you. You don't care how you make people feel. You only care about how you feel. That's why fellowship is so important. The devil created this so that men would not be sensitive to the hearts of others. When your identity consists only of ones and zeros of the internet, then you will eventually lose your filter for what is proper and appropriate. With our mouths, we say we believe, but many of our online posts show something different. How are Christians promoting lust and zodiacs and false gods, devil uh, glorifying music and imagery? How can our mouths confess Christ, but all we promote is the new world order? And this is the question, and the Lord laid this on my spirit, but how will we refuse the mark of the beast if it's already residing in our heart's desires? Soundness of mind is critical to salvation. You can't be saved and crazy. We got to get you delivered first. We got to get some brain cells bubbling up and percolating in your head. We got to get some brain cells working. And y'all understand, I'm not making fun of people that actually have disabilities. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people that are just not using all the cells that God has blessed them with. How can we follow God if our state of mind does not even allow us the capacity to be obedient to his word and his will. You can't serve God in your head and ignore him with your actions. This is being double-minded and what? 
unstable. God's word taught us to be discreet, keeping our private business and the privacy of others out of our mouths. But the first symptom of mental illness that any psychologist and psych a psychiatrist will tell you is the lack of a what? A filter and the inability to use discretion. Romans 15 and 5. Now the God of patience and consolation grants you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus, that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God. This is the body of Christ. We should have one mind to, to look out for our brothers, to love one another. One mind and one mouth which we glorify God with and we don't tear each other down. Even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. After we prepared our minds, now we got to prepare our bodies. Especially for this virus and all these things that's going on. The COVID-19 virus is a real virus. People really have it. People are really sick. Some of them end up dying from it. But compared to the common seasonal flu, it is not as bad as the media is portraying it to be. It's just not. I know somebody, oh, but you shouldn't say. I'm telling you, I've talked to doctors for the last two weeks and they've all shared with me, no, if you do the numbers, the seasonal flu is just as bad. The death toll of this virus is fueled by something that the media cannot and will not disclose. Bad lifestyle practice. Because our media promotes eating fast food, sitting around watching TV and checking social media accounts all day, they cannot encourage good eating, good thinking, and sound living. This coupled with the fact that most people sit for work and do not move enough has caused our immune systems to be sluggish and weak. Then you add all the meds people are on that their bodies don't recognize and have to fight against all day, every day, and you get a busy immune system that never rests, so it's taxed. Our vital nutrients are lacking and our sleep is deprived. And let's not forget the emotional issues most people are carrying. Hurt from our past and bad decisions or haunting us, hatred and malice in our hearts toward others, as well as unforgiveness will tear your health down considerably. Then add to that obesity, glutton, gluttony, slothfulness, and lack of concern for our physical and emotional health, it has turned us into New World Order lab rats. So when they release or when a virus comes out, it has just crazy implications on us. We will eat what they tell us to eat and take what meds they tell us to take without even reading the ingredients or inquiring about what is in it. Has somebody joke, was joking and said, you know, this, this, this isn't the coronavirus. This is just those Popeye's chicken sandwiches digested. <laughs> but folks will just eat it because they showing you commercial and the dude biting the sandwich. Oh, oh, this is ministering to my spirit. They just said anything and you went and got a sandwich. I know I went and got one. But we just eat it and don't ask for any ingredients. And, and look, y'all, I ate one, but I ain't eating one every night. I know folks just, I mean, they have, they, they have a name in the parking lot like the church. <laughs> the manager and then them. I'm just kidding. That don't exist. But that was funny in my head. We will eat what they tell us to eat and take what meds they tell us to take. So when a virus comes, our bodies cannot fight against it like it should. We should be able to weather the storm against the seasonal flu and COVID-19. But our bodies are just not in the place where they should be. Folks aren't healthy. Now we know with 5G and all the devices we use from day to day, our systems are already overloaded, trying to keep us from EMF toxification. So it's best that we start taking care of our temples. So the phone is already bringing you down. The Wi-Fi is bringing you down. So we got to start taking care of ourselves. Let's focus on getting our physical bodies or our physical houses or our physical church temple in order. We may love our church, physical, I mean the building, and love seeing our church family weekly. But have we taken what we have learned and applied it correctly? If our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost, shouldn't we be concerned with its health? They say there is no cure for this virus, but that's a lie. 
Like the flu, your body can handle it if it is healthy enough. Vitamin C only works if you put it in a system that can use it efficiently. You can't expect it to work if everything else in your body is off. So we must do our part and clean up our physical temples so that we can stay healthy and wise as we face the pestilence of these end times. 1 Corinthians 6 and 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are brought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body with your fork and in your spirit which are God's. Summary! Oh, this was good. As that great and terrible day of the Lord approaches, we must get our acts together. We must use this time of home confinement to seriously reconsider things that being busy all the time caused us to neglect. Missing a few Sundays from being in a church building isn't totally a bad thing. In a way, it can be a good thing for us to concentrate on preparing ourselves with the knowledge of the word that we have already received. If missing a few Sundays causes us to fall into peril, if you just backslide after a few Sundays, then what has it all been for? Like if Sunday was the only thing keeping you saved, then you ain't saved. Our churches should have prepared us for these times and given us the knowledge and faith that we need. So let's use this time wisely and not rush to get back to normal. For most, normal was not what it should have been. And this time of home confinement is proving that. You're not normal. Now you know. When you're busy, you don't know. Now you slow down, you're looking around, you see your family, you see, you see your husband, you're not normal. Let's strive for God's normal or God's normality and set our standards to his during this time. Let's strengthen our relationships in the home, clean our hearts, renew our minds. Let's eat right, get good rest, take better care of our physical bodies so that we can fight sickness more effectively. Jesus is coming back soon, so this is not the time for complaining or fighting the wrong battles. This is the time to prepare for his coming and making sure that nothing prevents us from going back with him. Luke 21 and 34, this is the amplified version. It says, but take heed to yourselves and be on your guard, lest your heart be overburdened and depressed, which is weighed down with the giddiness and headache and nausea of self-indulgence, drunkenness, and worldly worries and cares pertaining to the business of this life. And lest that day come upon you suddenly like a trap or a noose. You're so busy, the day catches you off guard. For it will come upon all who live upon the face of the entire earth. Keep awake then and watch at all times. Be discreet, attentive, and ready. Praying that you may have the full strength and ability and be accounted worthy to escape all these things taken together that will take place and to stand in the presence of God the Son of Man. Just bow your heads everywhere. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for this word in end time preparation, God, so that we can get things right. Father God, so that this time of confinement or being in our homes, not being able to come into church building, and God, these times will be remembered as the times where we got closer to our families, we healed relationships, we repented to one another, got forgiveness. Father, this could be the time where we decide to work on our bodies and not just sit home and eat and sleep and watch TV. But Father God, we're going to actually be proactive so that we can stay healthy, so that this virus and whatever else is going around, this 5G, all the things they are testing, all the things they're doing behind the scenes. Father God, these things won't have a huge effect on us because we are actively dealing with our temples, cleansing our temples physically, spiritually, emotionally. God, help us handle situations that are tough. Help us to go and deal with situations and lose pride and remove pride from our hearts. God, help us to just do 
everything that needs to be done in preparation because we know that your return is drawing near. It's even at the door. You are so close and we want to be ready. So help us be prepared in this last hour in Jesus' name. Amen.